Today we're gonna learn how to make the most epic thief armor ever. Stay tuned. <music> Greetings adventurers and welcome to Skill Tree where we learn how to do just about everything. I am egregiously excited to show you what I've made. We've been starting kind of back at zero with almost everything, but that leaves us in a bit of a dilemma where I've done a lot of work so far learning leather craft, so it feels kind of disingenuous to always just start at zero. So with Leathercraft, we decided to split the difference where we're doing some of those beginner episodes as well. And then every once in a while, jumping back to like what my current level is and trying to level up from there. And today's episode is especially special because at the end of each one of our kind of tiers, we have to do like a keystone project to prove that we belong in the next tier. And today is my journeyman project. So I've decided to pull out all the stops and do just the best I can do. The project? This epic thief armor that Maddie designed. Not only does it have to look great, but it has to be functional because I'm going to be using it in our next LARP. And oh my god, I'm so excited about it. All right, we got a lot to get over, so let's just jump right into it and level up this skill. Okay, so specifically from this picture, I'm just doing the chest armor, not the belt and stuff yet. And since I'm making this bad boy from scratch, we have to go ahead and make our template first. To do that, I'm employing the torso of my foam golem here. By far the creepiest, the creepiest thing I own. It really, really is. Now, if you don't have some sort of a dress form or something that's your sizes, don't worry. You can totally just use like a t-shirt or something, tape over that, and you can do everything, everything we're gonna do from there. In fact, as you'll see, I basically have to do that anyways. But for starters, I take my little foam golem and I wrap it in some plastic wrap, just making sure I cover the entire surface. Then I go back over the whole thing in duct tape. Whether you're duct taping a form or duct taping yourself, I recommend doing smaller strips. Like don't try to just wrap it all around, it never works out well. With smaller strips, you can kind of contour and make sure everything's covered perfectly. Okay, from here, we're gonna draw on our design of all the different like plates of the armor. I'm doing my best here to match up what I've got going on on the, the picture, but it doesn't have to be like Perfect. Basically, you're just going to choose whichever your best side is, and everything's going to be designed off of that one side. Oh, real quick tip that I learned. If you're using a Sharpie like I am, you can just use some cotton dipped in acetone to remove your marks if you need to erase it. All right, so once I have all my panels drawn into place, I go back in and I add in all of these little arrows here, which tell me of parts that are going to be like underneath another part, right? So I would, if I was drawing this one out, I would make a little arrow showing that this panel goes underneath here. That's because once we cut these out, they're not going to have that extra little bit, right? So we're going to have to remind ourselves that we need to add another, I don't know, three quarters of an inch to it. All right, with that all good to go, I take an X-Acto knife and I perform surgery on this mofo. Slowly peeling back his skin. Is it creepy or do I just make it creepy? I might, it might be me. I might be creepy. Anyways, like you can see, this whole thing just kind of comes off like a little bolero jacket. A bolero jacket, which does not fit. Uh, this is going to sound like, like I'm trying to like brag, like I'm beefy huge or something like that. But uh, since I've made my foam golem, I've been taking my health seriously and been going to the gym. And my chest is completely different size. Like I am, that is no longer an accurate thing. I was super pissed, but also a little, a little happy, you know, I thought it was cool. Anyways, the whole thing's made out of duct tape. To fix it, I just added some more duct tape and then cut it off of me now in the right dimensions. I just had to go back in with my scissors and recut some of those lines so they look smooth. And then of course, redraw on the bits that I covered over. And this is a much better fit. I even cut a little bit more off of one arm to see how that feels because I noticed the other side was feeling kind of tight and I really don't want that leather to dig into me. The very first armor I made, which you can find right here, dug into me something terrible, man. In the middle of a LARP, I had to like go and cut it away because I was getting all bruised and nasty. Never making that mistake again. All right, so with that good, I just take some scissors and I go in and I cut along all of my lines. Now remember, we're only keeping one side of this, so make sure you choose your best side and only cut that side out. I mean, you could cut both sides out, but you're gonna get confused and get a mishmashed, and it's better to just be careful. All right, so in the past when I've made templates this way, I know it's really difficult because the, the duct tape doesn't lay down flat, right? Like it is over your curves and whatever, and it follows those lines. So I really wanted these to be one, templates that last because I kind of like them, and two, things that will lay more flat so they're easier to cut. So the first thing I did was roll out some of this brown paper here that they usually use for like protecting floors and stuff. 
and traced out all of my shapes onto that. Now again, we need to add on those little bits that are gonna overlap underneath things, right? Underlap, overlap, you know, they're gonna go underneath things. I, I'm not sure. To do this really easily, I just kind of used a compass that was set to three quarters of an inch wide and glide along those lines so I can trace them exactly. That said, I've also in the past used the brown paper for templates and they can kind of curl on you and be a little wonky and they're a little hard to trace. So to thicken them up a little bit, I just sprayed some adhesive onto this foam board here and then stuck my paper to that. Then just went back in with my sharp razor knife and cut everything out. And there we have it, the front and back panels all assembled together. Now, leather is expensive, foam is cheap, and you really wanna try on something that you're gonna wear mocked up somehow before you go ahead and cut into the, the pricey stuff, right? So to test this out, I actually rolled out some of this white foam that I had kicking around. Now remember, we're gonna need to have two sides of that, right? And the other side needs to be mirrored. So I put my templates down one way with the brown side here facing up first, and then once I've cut those out, I flip them over so that those white sides are facing up. This is gonna give me the mirror of what I've already done. With all of those panels cut out and organized, I then got to taping them together so I can try it out. I tried to make it exactly how it would be when it goes together, so all the right amount kind of overlapping or underlapping things. And check out how cool this looks. I love how this looks. I still have the foam version of it. I'm thinking about like sticking it together and making more of like cosplay armor out of it because it's so cool. But this is why we do this, right? Because I did notice one, that the arms felt a little bit tight. So this is a great opportunity to go ahead and mark those with a Sharpie so I knew to cut some of that away. I also noticed that it didn't close evenly, right? So when I kind of straightened everything out on the paper, it didn't have those curves and contours that my body had. So I just had to kind of knock out those, those two high points on the ends, which after I did that, it fit super slick. And the armhole felt way better, so much better. And again, those adjustments only really need to be made to one side. You just have to remember that after you make those adjustments, correct your templates. You can see here, I marked off the parts that were removed on the other ones so that I can correct those and have accurate templates. All right, so in the artwork, the armor has this badass collar that I, I really love the look of. I'm a sucker for the little, little military collars. Ah, so cool. Anyways, making this was pretty damn simple. I just kind of cut these two strips of foam, pretty much just how I thought it would look cool. I didn't use any specific measurements or anything. I just cut kind of a, a two inch strip, I believe it was, and then angled one side because I wanted to have the point for the collar. Pretty much it. Though you will see that I'm using two pieces. So I wanna make this thing adjustable. That seam down the back, I wanna have like lacing coming down so I can make it wider if I need to. But if the collar was all connected together, it would like stop there and like pull at itself. So I wanna make it so the collar can slide against itself so that it can be adjustable as well. Though you'll see once I made it into this template here, I added on this three quarter of an inch on the bottom. That's basically my leather seam allowance, right? I need that to fold up so that I can then sew it to the rest of the armor. You'll see once we actually put them together how, how it is. It's hard to visualize, I think, off of the bat. Okay, with all that groundwork done, it's time to commit this to leather. For this project, I'm using this beautiful seven to eight ounce veg tan leather. It's not like armor thick, which would be closer to like 12 ounces, somewhere around there, but it's not supposed to. This is thief armor. It's supposed to be agile and slick. Also, it gets real hot at most of these LARPs, and I don't want to be in full armor. So I just carefully position all of my template pieces as close as I can to each other so I don't waste a lot of leather. Again, we're making sure we, we cut them out one way and then flip them over to cut out the other way. This is going to leave us with two mirrored pieces and both sides being exactly symmetrical. Now, of course, with all these pieces, I'm going to go ahead and bevel them. Well, not all of the pieces. You see, some of them, if you look carefully at the drawing, have like texture to them, right? And this is where I thought it would be a lot of fun to add a little bit, a little bit something extra. On all those pieces that I feel are gonna have some sort of texture, like the ones down here by the ribs and the ones coming over the top here, I didn't bevel those edges because I want them to be square because I'm gonna be putting this stuff on top of them. This is a gator print milled leather and I love it so much. It looks so cool. Real fast, real fast divergence here. It Tandy Leather where I got all this stuff. Um, they're not sponsored by the way, I just love them. But they had actual gator skin and at first I was like, oh, it'd be fun to try different leather for this project to kind of level that up a bit. But actual gator skin. 
only about this big, was like 200 bucks. And it looked identical to that, to the, the milled one. Like, if you had them side by side, colored the same, man, I'd be hard pressed to tell the difference. But because it is milled leather, it is very, it's almost like chrome tan. It's super loose, right? And that isn't gonna work because I need some structure. So my thought is that I'm going to take it and glue it on top of the pieces that go where I want them to go. To facilitate that, I just kind of roughly cut them out a little bit larger than the shape that they're gonna go over. Then I went to town adding contact adhesive to the front of the other parts that I had cut, the original parts, and the back of those gator prints. Once that was all cured up, I simply just pushed them together, making sure they sealed. By leaving that little bit of leather extra, I'm able to cut along the edge and make the fit look perfect. Whereas then if I had cut them perfect and tried to position them, odds are I would have screwed it up. I'm not that careful. And with that, we have all of our sexy pieces ready for more work. Look at how cool that gator print looks. Oh my god. Now it does add a little bit of extra bulk to that leather, but again, we started with a fairly thin leather, so that doesn't matter too much. Added like another two to three ounces. Wasn't a big deal. Now for the parts that didn't get the gator print, I didn't want them to just be kind of flat, um, so I decided to add just a little border to them. To do this, I just did the usual. I wet down my leather and then busted up my wing divider here, set to about a half of an inch. Then just traced along the edge so I left my mark. Then I just simply went back in with my swivel knife to cut those in. This will give me this really nice even border all the way around. And then to add some depth to it, I just went back in with my beveler stamp and knocked that edge down all the way around. This gives me this really nice clean edge and adds a bit of depth to the whole thing. Again, if you're new to all this, check out the beginner leather crafts playlist and you can learn most of all this stuff. Actually, this project is fairly easy to do. You could probably do it as a beginner if you followed along. Now, in the past chest armor type stuff that I've made, there's one thing that I've, I've never done and I've always regretted. Basically, I've just kind of put it together and my chest ended up being real flat. Like I never shaped the armor, I just kind of stuck the panels on there. And all good like superhero clothing and stuff makes it look like you have manly pecs. I don't know why I did that, I didn't know why I did it like that. You know what I mean though. So I decided to try my hand at this a little bit. To do that, I first had to make sure that leather was good and wet so I could shape it. So I just used my sponge and soaked in a bunch of water into the back side of it. Now to shape it, I have this Dragon Ball that I made in a past episode. Episode will be down in the description, it's really hard from scratch to make a ball shape. I'll have you know that. Using this though, I just basically stretched the leather around it until I got that kind of peck shape that I'm looking for. Though you do wanna be careful because I, I beveled the edges first and you can muddy up your tooling. So I tried to make sure I grabbed it without like putting a lot of pressure on those edges. Just a heads up. As you can see though, once it dries, it maintained that shape really well. Now it looks like I am strong, beefy man. Aside from my standard like nipple on a rib action I got going on here. Okay, while we're wet forming, we also wanna shape those collars that we talked about. Basically, we want this extra on the bottom here to fold up. To make that happen, I drew this line kinda of where that delineation, where it needs to fold, and then went back in with this skiver here to thin out the area that I wanted to fold up. If you don't have one of these, you can just actually sand it. I've had luck doing that as well. Once that's thinned, I wet along where I wanted the fold to happen and then carefully folded it into position. Now, not only do I need it to kind of fold up this way, but it's a collar, right? I need it to have that kind of U shape to it. So in order to make sure it dried in that kind of position, I just used some rope and tied it into that position. Leather's really cool. If you wet it and then let it dry in a position, it generally stays in that position. And now look at that. These suckers are, are collars. They look like collars. It's great. Okay, from here, because it's Thief Armor, I decided to dye the whole thing USMC black. Nothing fancy here, just covered it with dye. Though I do like to show that like when it first dries, look at how dull it looks. Really gotta make sure that you brush off all of the top coat that kind of settles on there. Because without any added product, it looks super shiny. Though to add a little bit of extra shine and to make sure it's protected, I just sprayed on some of this resist here. And then again, polished it up once it was dry. Look at how sexy that is. Oh my God, I love this stuff. That gator print is so cool. Now, this is like a keystone project. So I wanted to go, I wanted to go real extra. I want to try something I hadn't tried before. Basically, I wanted to make this armor really comfortable and like posh. So I decided that I would line it. 
A few episodes ago, I made like a musketeer kind of jacket out of this stuff, this faux suede here. It is so smooth and beautiful. It's also like soft and thin, so I figured it'd be nice to line the inside of it with this. Now, I was gonna do that with a spray adhesive, which left me with a bit of a conundrum because I was afraid that as I'm spraying it, some of that adhesive would get underneath on my finished area. But then lightning struck my brain. I have this giant roll o masking tape that I use when I do my laser engraver, and it is perfect for this. It's really low tack, so I don't gotta worry about it leaving stickiness onto my pieces. I just kinda slap my leather face down on this stuff. I then can spray with impunity. Just making sure the whole surface that I want it to stick to is covered. Then I simply lay my fabric down on top of it, making sure the correct side is up. From there, I can just flip them over, remove the tape, and then cut out my pieces perfectly. And that could not have been easier. I was surprised at how well that worked out. I'd come this far and I was genuinely worried I would screw this thing up. But it looks so good! And it feels incredible. Like, Yo, this armor is posh. It is so cool. <laughs> All right, but now is the time for actual assembly. Now, because we have a lot of moving pieces and they have to overlap correctly in order for this whole thing to go together, I actually decided to use some of this Tanner's Bond tape to hold it together before I, I actually like lock it together. Using that, I can kind of position everything perfectly. Then in the corners, I just dropped in some rivets so that it would stay exactly where I wanted it to go. Though, order of operations wise, I get it right on the next side. I actually had to take that the tape apart a little bit so that I can sew all the way up underneath that overlap. Otherwise, I'd have to stop right where like that chest piece meets the obliques. Now to sew this together, I am using my badass Tandy sewing machine. You can see the review for it right here. I love this thing. If you're wondering if you should buy that machine, oh man, it's so great. But if you don't have it or you don't have the money to drop on a sewing machine, no worries. You could one, do this by hand. Absolutely. I have a weekend to get stuff done, so I have to run it through a sewing machine. I'm not going to hand sew the whole thing. Or you can buy the, the cheaper Amazon sewing machine. I have a link to a video on that one too. It's like a hundred bucks and that thing has been my workhorse. If I didn't have that machine, I'd be using that machine. In fact, I'm pretty sure when the universe dies of heat death, that machine will still function. It's, it's really good. Doing this though, I just went ahead and put all my panels together. Another special note though to keep in mind. So at first I freaked out because you can see these back panels here don't match up. That edge is supposed to be together. But then I realized it's, it's a, it's a three-dimensional shape, right? When you bend it like your back would bend, then everything matches up. So just a thing to keep in mind, I actually had to bend it into place and to lock those edges in with rivets before I brought it to the sewing machine. And you'll see here, it's like it's turned in the wrong way and I have to push it back out, but then it makes this perfect back shape. And look at, look at my front panels here, a little chest armor and it looks like a chest. And then these, the back looks amazing. Like that big broad back. Oh my God, it's so cool. This is so cool. Okay, so now I need to connect the back to the front, right? And that's gonna happen over the shoulder here. To do that, I just brought this pronged punch out and punched holes all along where they'd connect together. Then I matched up the other side so I can make those holes match perfectly. Now, when I was editing this together, I realized that I'm sewing with black thread onto black armor and sewing on camera is notoriously difficult to see anyways. But luckily I've done a video on like the five basic leather sewing stitches. You can find that in the description below. This particular stitch is the fourth one. It's the second to last one. You just zoom ahead and you can see exactly how I did this stitch. Now, again, in this video, I've decided to do something I've never done before, but it's gonna add ah, just that extra poshness to this thing. And that's basically, I want to wrap all of the edges that are gonna be like against me, right? To soften them. To do that, I have this two ounce chrome tan black leather here. Basically, I cut one inch wide strips with my strap cutter, which I'll then wrap around those edges. So like starting with the collar, I make it so it wraps around and then I cut out these two little notches so that I can wrap around the point and cover over itself. I think that's the only spot I do that in. Everywhere else, it just can kind of dead end a little bit. So I just cut a little like half circle through it. This cushion, I just wrap around the edge and then send through my sewing machine. Not a big deal, but the look is great. It makes those edges look really finished and again, nice and comfortable. My first one was a little bit rough, but as you can see, as I went on and did all of those edges, it came out looking so good. I'm 
super impressed with that and it's so simple now i only wrapped those edges that were touching me directly but i decided to go back in and just kind of sew all of the edges i didn't get footage of it but i went back in and made sure i sewed everything down just so that that fabric that i have on the inside wouldn't eventually start to peel up so like the very center here i didn't wrap that because it's not necessarily going to like cut into my skin at all and it would look a little funny so i just added stitching going all the way down to make sure that that fabric never peeled up Okay, with all those little edges done, it's time to add on the collar. This is simple. I just kind of put it into place and then sewed along that folded up area there. But now you can see what I'm talking about with how they're going to overlap. You see how it just kind of stops at the seam in the back? This way, when I add the other side to it, those two pieces overlap each other and gives me that space to be able to adjust the size if I need to. Okay, and with that, all of our like panels are done. I just need to put them together with the lacing in the back and then on the sides here. For that, I'm just gonna add in some grommets using my wing divider to make sure they're evenly spaced apart. Then I just go back in to punch in those holes. The little, the little grommets, the eyelets I'm gonna be using are these badass gunmetal ones. All the hardware I add on this thing from here on out is this really nice gunmetal. Oh, it's so cool. Anyways, these I just drop into place and I use the recommended hammer and anvil to lock them in. Again, doing this all up those back seams and on the side where it meets around the ribs. Now, just as an aside, because this is a, a, a keystone project, I wanted to make everything. I decided to make the lacing that I'm gonna use to put those together. This is dead simple. I just cut a circle of leather and fed it through my strap cutter, which was set to about an eighth of an inch. As you pull, the little circle just kind of turns around and a, and a long strip comes out. This is a great way to use your scrap, and this one circle gave me like four yards of lace. All of which I just kind of crammed into a little bowl and filled it with my dye. This little dip dye method's great because it makes it so I can kind of conserve the dye afterwards, pouring it back into the bottle. And then I just kind of pull the lacing through some paper towel a couple of times to remove all of the excess dye. Now, because it is an alcohol-based dye, it is gonna dry it out a little bit, so you gotta make sure that you like make it pliable again. I found with this particular time, I can just kind of rough it up in my hands and it softened it up a lot. Though sometimes you might wanna add a little bit of oil back to it so it doesn't get crispy. Anyways, with that lacing done, I just went ahead and laced up the back in this kind of baseball stitch pattern here. Then I just turned it over and, and laced up that, that excess cordage underneath the lacing. Keeping it out of the way, but giving me enough space that if I needed to widen it up any, I could. Oh my God, check out how cool that looks. That lacing is so badass, both on the back and the side. Oh my God. It's such a cool extra texture and gives that extra little bit of functionality. Oh, I love it so much. God, I love this project. All right, so all that's left is to get the buckles to, to connect the front and the neck. These are dead simple. I just used those gunmetal buckles, which are badass, and made this kind of four inch little belt here. Again, I've covered making buckles and belts a bunch of times. Check out the, the playlist below. I simply position them into place where they should go, marking their holes. Then punch those holes into place, and locked everything in with some rapid rivets. And once that neck was secure, I moved on to the front doing exactly the same thing. And oh my God, look at how good this is. This is so badass. It is the nicest thing I've ever made. It fits comfortably, it looks amazing. Like superhero armor. Oh my God, so I, I'm a huge Skyrim fan and it reminds me of like Nightingale armor. And once I have like the belt piece to go with it and the leg armor and stuff, oh my God, I'm so excited. This little bit of gator detail is, oh, it's so cool. And it goes on and off super easily because it's like a little jacket. Here, I'm trying not to mess up my mic while I do this, but look, ready? Whoop. Ah, it's so cool. Oh my God. And it is comfortable. There's enough room where I could like wear stuff underneath it, right? And that lining, oh, I am extremely proud of myself. Good. Take her off. The, being able to put armor on by myself and take it off, by the way, is really great. All the other armor I have, I can't like reach all the, the buckles and straps. Okay, I'll stop gushing, but oh man, it's so cool. But let me know what you think. Have I like sufficiently leveled up or what? I know last time I was on, I said that whoever put a hashtag merch in the comment section below would win something from our shop. You get to choose. So congratulations, Imber, spelled I-M-B-3-R-R. -R. 
You are the winner. Go check out our store and tell us what you want. You can either jump on the Discord or use the email in the description to let us know. Speaking of the Discord, if you're not on there yet, it's where everything is happening. Some incredible people having amazing conversations and sharing just the best stuff. Look at these projects. They are so talented over there. It really is one of the coolest communities I've ever belonged to. With a bunch of talented people helping each other make stuff and just kind of showing off what they got. If you haven't joined yet, definitely go check it out. Also, if you haven't seen yet, we are going to Conquest in Germany this year, and oh, I'm so excited about it. But we just released a video last week that has all of the details on how you can come with us. The link to that is going to be right here, so definitely go check that out. I hope, I hope you get a chance to come. Uh, we have a contest going on and everything. Check it out. All right, now I hope you like what we did here today. If you did, do us a solid. Give us some of that like and love. It really helps us grow. And don't forget to subscribe. Thank you for watching this far. I deeply appreciate it, and we'll see you next time. Until then, keep leveling up, you. You've made it to the end screen. YouTube loves it when you do that. It's a fantastic way to support this channel. Another great way to support this channel is by joining these people's noble ranks. These are our Patreon members, and we could not do this without them. Special shout out to our newest high tier Patreon level members, Tamni Dash and Stormy Mason. I appreciate you to the very bottom of my soul. Seriously, we, we, we can't do this. This ship does not sail without my Patreon members. So like, man, I really appreciate it. Oh, and I also want to wish a happy birthday to friend of the channel and all around amazing guy, Eric Enerson. Happy birthday, Eric. I, I think it's a little bit belated, but happy birthday anyway. If you like what we do here and want to support us, consider joining our Patreon, link in the description below. Otherwise, you can click on one of these videos YouTube thinks you like, and that'll help out a lot too. Ugh, it feels so good against my body. <laughs>